Welcome back to the channel guys. We're gonna look at Litecoin today, give it an update from our previous video and look at whether it's a good long-term hold and compare it to Ethereum and Bitcoin. Of course, we wanna find the best cryptos to be holding long-term. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Be sure to hit the like if you find some value from the content and hit the subscribe button if you wanna stick around for more cryptocurrency, stock content and investment economic cycle content. We cover the lot here because we are looking at long-term investing, cycling our profits through different asset classes. A big thank you to the returning viewers as well. Be sure to hit the bell notification icon if you want to see this content pop up in your news feed on YouTube. It has a way of shadow banning cryptocurrency content at the worst possible times. So be sure to do that down below. Last thing, thank you very much for 40,000 subscribers. We're well on our way to 50,000 subscribers. I got a huge discount coming out for you guys. My 40,000 subscribers special. The course is gonna be launched this week. If you wanna know more about that, I'll just mention you can leave your email address on my website, which, which there is a link to in the description down below. Be sure to only use the links in the description. There is a lot of scammers out there using my face, using my name, everything else in the comment section. That's generally not me giving you WhatsApp, Telegram, emails. That won't be me. All right, guys, let's take a look at Litecoin. Here's a refresher from the previous video. Litecoin, better than Ethereum and Bitcoin in 2021. Talked about that in detail. So today's video, we're gonna do an update on this. It's a couple of weeks old now. Little refresher, Litecoin. Litecoin peer-to-peer -peer internet currency that enables instant near zero cost payments to anyone in the world. We're gonna go through the news on Litecoin as well, some old stuff, and just see how that's being implemented and what's going on with the price. Let's have a look at the fear and greed index. This is a good one to always put on your list to watch on a daily, at least that's what I do, because I wanna know what the market sentiment is like out there. Are people feeling greedy? Should I be fearful? In this case, there is some greed out there, but we definitely know it has dropped off since the last couple of weeks and also last month where we were getting very close to that Bitcoin uh, all time high top. Quick look over at the Google trend words and then we'll get over to the coin market cap. Uh, Google trends, Litecoin is dropping off a lot and we know from experience that these are the better times to be looking to invest. Now, this is not a buy recommendation because I'm not a financial advisor. So everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and only. And what I'm trying to educate on here is it's better to be buying whatever asset it is that you want when the noise is low. And so this is one metric here that I like to use, Google trend words, the noise is low. Not many people are searching it. We looked at the fear and greed index. It has also dropped off. So we know that there's less people out there searching for these cryptos. Next thing we'll have a look at is the coin market cap. See where we're sitting. Eighth on the table here at 9 billion at 136. We are close to Chainlink flipping that again, but Chainlink's just flipped it. But as long as we're in front of the rest of these guys, we're looking pretty good. I think over the course of the year, Litecoin will also eventually flip XRP. Of course, XRP will have some boom times as well, even though it's really starting to struggle. Uh, I definitely think Litecoin will be one of those top 10 cryptocurrencies for some time to come for the following reasons. Let's have a quick look at some of the news, new and old. Litecoin surges after PayPal includes it among the crypto customers. So this is an old piece of news from October. But the point is we want to remember this because it might not be until this quarter in 2021, quarter one, where PayPal will flip their switch and allow Litecoin payments. Initially, the service supports BTC, ETH, Bitcoin Cash, and LTC. When are they doing this? We don't have a date yet, but it's a good reminder that this is coming on PayPal. Once this flips, I think this will be a massive catalyst for a pretty decent spike in the price. Next thing is Flare, and this is also not brand new news, but just a couple of weeks old. Flare Network announces Litecoin airdrop. So what we know from airdrops is people will buy up the coin that is going to be airdropped onto and obviously to get that coin that's going to be airdropped. So LTC and XRP were getting a Flare Network airdrop. Uh, it's announced, but there's no date yet for the snapshot to be taken of the blockchain for when those coins will be dropped. Again, this is still leading up to all of this other news that is coming out in the first half of 2021. Another partnership type deal going on here with Cardano, Charles Hoskinson, Litecoin collaboration. So these guys are looking to work together. Again, no exact announcements of what it is, where it is, what's going on, but it does look promising as there is some more development on Litecoin. After we saw nothing from the previous 
video and we know there's not much on GitHub. There is stuff going on in the background here. Now the last piece of great development news from Litecoin, which is back in October and it has been around for some time, we have to remember that Mimblewimble may be launching on Litecoin. So this is their privacy network. And privacy is a very important piece of cryptocurrency because that was the whole reason why it was invented. We want to have anonymity from the main central banks. So we don't want them knowing what we are buying and selling because they can then put restrictions on what we do. And Bitcoin doesn't have the anonymity. So they can test out the privacy on Litecoin. And then if it works, they can implement it on chains like Bitcoin. So this is still a great piece of news, which we have to see further development from. But for now, we just want to remember that it's still out there. So we've got a lot of good stuff coming on Litecoin. Keep it in the backs of our mind. The search for Litecoin is down. All of the development is still there. This is a nice recipe going together. Lots of good stuff. Not many people thinking about it. You know what comes next. Quick bit of Bitcoin news, only because this marries into the market sentiment of the overall market. And that's what we want to know about here. Bitcoin returned to 40 grand in doubt as flows to key fund slows. So this is 25th of January. This is new news. Basically, they're talking about here the pace of flows into the 20 billion grayscale Bitcoin trust appears to have peaked based on four week rolling averages. JP Morgan strategist led by Nikolaus, I'm not going to say the surname, said in a note Friday, the fund slid 22% over the past two weeks through January 22, outpacing 17% drop in Bitcoin in the same period. So their fund fell further than the Bitcoin price fell. I don't see this as so much of an issue because we have already identified that we are just in a pullback in the overall Bitcoin bull market. And so this is expected. It's not a surprise to people in the know. I don't, definitely don't think it's going to affect the price long term. This is just a short term piece here to know that I believe the greed has slowed down. Another strong sign for purchasing now. So I'm going to make another altcoin video as well. Probably something around the DeFi space and top 10 or top 15 altcoins, especially the stuff that we've been looking at on the channel over the last month or so that are having great gains at the moment. Moving on to the Grayscale Trust, just having a look here, Litecoin, and they are in Grayscale. If you don't know, Grayscale has 27 billion in funds, so assets under management. And as for Litecoin, there are 180 million assets under management for uh, Litecoin. So there's a fair bit of Litecoin being held by Grayscale as well. A few more pieces of news before we get onto the charts. Rothschild Investment adds to Grayscale Bitcoin holdings. So Rothschilds, we all know that as a pretty dirty name out there. However, Rothschild Investments adds Bitcoin to their holdings. So they got about a million, not anything huge but uh, institutional investment manager of 1.4 billion disclosed Monday its shares in the trusts were worth 975,000 at the end of 2020. So nothing huge out of their 1.4 billion, but it's a very interesting piece of news here. Just come out today, just a few hours ago actually, that Rothschilds are buying Bitcoin. What the hell is going on here? Let's have a look at the last couple of pieces here. Now this is going to tie into the point about trading or long-term investing. So. Pay attention to this if you're interested in that sort of thing. Crypto hedge funds underperformed Bitcoin during rally last year. Overall, all they're saying here is average returns were 166% while Bitcoin quadrupled in 2020. So if you just held Bitcoin, you would have done better than buying into crypto hedge funds. We all think that hedge funds are going to make the big money because they can move things around. They're in the know. Would have been just better holding Bitcoin. And that's what the article goes on to say. It just mentions different periods. During 2017, their gains were 1100, uh, whereas the rest of it was around mainstream consensus with around 1375. Another piece here to take note, the top performing funds were funds that were long only. So not even shorting the market helped the funds. Of course, individual traders can do much better than this, providing they have some experience or a lot of experience and the nerve to stomach these sorts of losses in the market. So really don't worry if you are just a buy and a hold sort of guy or girl and you wanna just sell out some towards the top because you start to get a feel like it's getting way too frothy. You're not doing much worse or actually you're probably gonna do better than a lot of hedge funds and people who are trying to move their money all around too often. So don't worry about it. Last couple of pieces here, I've got Dogecoin will be implemented in XRP's utility fork Flare Networks. Now I'm mentioning this because Dogecoin has a connection with Litecoin around their mining and so they secure each other. 
and uh, Dogecoin is going to be on Flare and then Flare is going to be airdropped onto Litecoin. So you can start to see there is some sort of uh, community being built here through Doge, Litecoin, Flare, uh, etc. So there is this sort of out there development going on. So just something to keep in mind. Now the last piece I want to have a chat about Charlie Lee's nine favorite things about Litecoin. Let's just go through the top mentions. In nine years, Litecoin had zero downtime. And so Charlie says, it's one of the few coins that can claim to have ever done that. Even Bitcoin had issues and also Ethereum, whereas Litecoin has been running nonstop for almost 10 years. That's pretty decent and it's still in the top 10. Launched in October of 2011. It's been a top 10 ranking cryptocurrency ever since it was invented. Litecoin's mining algorithm gives it security advantage. What that means is it doesn't use the same mining algorithm as Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. So you could attack Bitcoin Cash, dump it, and then you could still go back to mining Bitcoin. Whereas for Litecoin, if they were to attack it, there's nothing else they can mine. So they would just destroy their, their livelihood. Moving on, Litecoin has high liquidity. Yes, we can see that they're in the top 10. They have been for a long time and they're traded on almost every single exchange. It has more ATM support than any crypto except Bitcoin. Fair enough, Bitcoin is the gold market here. Litecoin is supported by PayPal, which we just talked about earlier. Uh, so that's gonna come through sometime, hopefully in this first quarter of 2021. Next thing, privacy features are coming to Litecoin. Yep, we got that. The fungibility section is what we need when it comes to cryptocurrencies. We need fungibility if we're gonna be able to use them long-term as cash gets phased out and they bring in the CBDCs, the central bank digital currencies. Number eight, almost 2% of Litecoin is locked up in the Grayscale Litecoin Trust. We've also covered that as well. Uh, 27 billion in assets under management, where for Litecoin we saw it was around 180 million in Litecoin. And lastly, Litecoin survived after Lee cashed out. Now, Charlie Lee cashed out of all of his Litecoin in early 2018, sold all of his Litecoin. People were pissed at him for that. They thought he was the one that dumped the price. If they understood cycles, they would know that it's not just going to be one person selling out. Even if he did hold a lot, it was the cycle. The cycle was coming to an end. All of the altcoins at that time were booming in February and they all busted after February, even Chainlink, which did extremely well during the bear market. So I definitely don't think that it had anything to do with Charlie Lee selling out, but uh, it's just an interesting fact nonetheless that he did sell out close to the end of the bull market. So the end of 2017, got some massive gains on his holdings of Litecoin. That's the way it runs. He understands what needs to be going on and how he's developed with Litecoin. I think it's a great thing. Let's take a look at the charts. Let's turn our attention to the charts. And the first chart I wanna have a look at, all that news looks great. We think it's a pretty good project long-term. What I wanna have a look at is good areas to buy and sell. So we're gonna take a look between the Litecoin BTC chart and the Litecoin USD chart. Litecoin BTC looks like a great buying area. And we talked about this in the previous video as well. We are sitting close to the lows. We've got a low back here and another low forming here. If we've got a horizontal, we're getting close to it. We have broken out of this little range here on, uh, on Litecoin. And so I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more so we can get a closer look at what's going on here. Basically, we want to see this start to head up and move towards this resistance. So clearing up a few indicators just to get a better idea, I'm going to step the market back to this point. And from there, we could see that Litecoin was looking like it's about to explode out of this falling wedge. So let's fast forward a few weeks and we can see what happens from this point. The market starts to break out, creates a new higher low, which is what we've been tracking to find a better entry point from where we were. And so what we've got to do from here is move the horizontal to the next high and we're really starting to get a long drawn out accumulation zone uh, just above the previous low. How long can these go on for is another question. Usually they like to take up about 70% of the wedge before they really take off. From this point, what can we expect? We're still around 0 0.0042. And so from here, I'm expecting a rise to about the top of that trend line. Litecoin versus Bitcoin has been a very long, slow grind all the way down with some spikes in between. And so where I'm talking about long-term holds, if we're buying at these lows, these lows here, then 
we can always be in line with Bitcoin value. We're not losing out on Bitcoin value. If we're buying at the tops, then we were better off just buying Bitcoin. What does that mean exactly? If we bought up here at 0.02, which is 2% of Bitcoin, and now we only have 0.004, so we have about five times less. We'll have five times less Bitcoin value, but the dollar value may be high. It might be a lot more than what it was back in um, early to mid 2017, which we already know it was. We would have been better off just holding Bitcoin because Bitcoin is, has also increased in dollar value since early to mid 2017. If we wanna look at Litecoin as a long-term hold, these are probably decent areas to accumulate Litecoin so that we're not losing out against Bitcoin value either. Now, the disclaimer to this is if Litecoin starts to break down below this low and this low, it could continue on a lot further and it could lead to a long-term downtrend against Bitcoin value and therefore Litecoin would not be a great hold. In terms of 2021 as a buy, I definitely think we're gonna break out of this and shoot up to one of these levels. Maybe we'll overshoot it a little bit, maybe get our 300% against Bitcoin, so not USD, we'll have a look at that in a sec. So maybe we'll get 300, maybe 400, but I think overall, if this trend continues, then we're looking at about 200% to the top of this trend line. And I don't think we're going to be over this trend line long-term. It's going to take a lot for Litecoin to come about and take over its Bitcoin value. It needs to get above 1.5% and stay above 1.5%. I. I'm pretty sure we will hear a lot about Litecoin being the next big thing as we get closer to the top of this market. That's exactly what the news was back here in uh, January 2018. There was a lot of hype saying this is your last time to own cheap Litecoin. This right here, I remember even trading through that and I couldn't believe that it snapped back. And from that snapback, was a dead coin after that. As much as we wanna make a long-term gain from Litecoin, there's a lot of fantastic stuff coming out on Litecoin in terms of its development. It might be a better idea just to hold Bitcoin if we're at any level above where we currently see ourselves now. Let's have a look at Litecoin versus USD. It definitely looks like a much better chart than this. That's the obvious reason is because Bitcoin's going up. So our targets, uh, up here, we've got uh, 220 and of course the old all-time high at around 400, 420. The breakout here, I'm on a two-week chart, remember, as well. So this is a macro view. We're not looking at micro views of hourly charts, 30-minute charts, anything like that. This is a, a two-week chart. So it's a, it's a very micro look at the market. And we've broken above the resistance at 130. Now we've come back to sit on it. So the uh, resistance support flip, which is a fantastic sign for a breakout. We've looked at that many, many times, especially on Bitcoin. And we've see, we have seen that pattern play out on Bitcoin and we're looking like we're gonna see it play out on Ethereum as well. I have no doubts that it's gonna play out on Litecoin. So it's definitely a good USD trade, uh, but could you just hold Bitcoin and uh, be better off? Potentially, potentially. But short term, I think Litecoin can definitely outperform uh, Bitcoin at this stage. And let's take a last look at Litecoin versus Ethereum. Can it outperform Ethereum? Well, we're pretty much at all time lows and it has broken the all time low since we last spoke. Now that's gonna be because Ethereum has gone on a massive charge. Once Litecoin picks itself together, gets itself, gets its act back on the road, then sure, we'll probably see a spike through Litecoin. But this is a long-term downtrend which is, has not been able to break against Ethereum and it has now broken the support. It has broken its bottom and fallen out, which is not a good sign, which looking back at our update, it wasn't at this stage just yet. Ethereum hadn't broken out. Everything was looking good for Litecoin to take on Ethereum as well. Now, with that said, I still believe Litecoin can bounce back from this point and probably get us a little bit more Ethereum as well. But with the strength of Ethereum and the amount of institutions coming in for Ethereum and Bitcoin, it's probably gonna be a much harder task for uh, Litecoin to really take on Ethereum. Bitcoin. I definitely think so. So it depends on which is your bag. Are you wanting to increase your Bitcoin holdings? Are you wanting to increase your Ethereum holdings? Or are you wanting to increase your Litecoin holdings for other reasons that you believe Litecoin will outperform Ethereum and Bitcoin? Let me know in the comments down below. That's what we have to go with today for the price update on Litecoin, the news update for Litecoin. That is your hopium free cryptocurrency news. 
your Nopium. And if you found value from the video, let me know, hit the likes down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit the bell notification icon and check out the links in the description to buy your cryptocurrencies in Australia with SwiftX and internationally with Binance if you are interested in getting in on some of these trades. Beware of the charts. We're going to keep doing some updates on Litecoin. I've got Ethereum coming out again. I've got some Chainlink, Cardano, Polkadot, and Bitcoin. So stick around on the channel. We're going to get through these cryptocurrencies on the charts and the updated news as well. See you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.